We support strongly the work of the OPCW fact-finding mission that is currently in Damascus. But that mission is only able to make an assessment of whether chemical weapons were used. Even if the OPCW team is able to visit Douma to gather information to make that assessment, and they are currently being prevented from doing so by the regime and the Russians, it cannot attribute responsibility. This is because Russia vetoed in November 2017 an extension of the joint investigatory mechanism set up to do this. And last week, in the wake of the Douma attack, it again vetoed a new UNSC resolution to re-establish such a mechanism. And even if we had OPCW's findings and a mechanism to attribute, for as long as Russia continues to veto, the UN Security Council still would not be able to act. So, Mr Speaker, we cannot wait to alleviate further humanitarian suffering caused by chemical weapons attacks. Second, were we not just following orders from America? Let me be absolutely clear. We have acted because it is in our national interest to do so. It is in our national interest to prevent the further use of chemical weapons in Syria and to uphold and defend the global consensus that these weapons should not be used. For we cannot allow the use of chemical weapons to become normalised, either within Syria, on the streets of the UK or elsewhere. So we have not done this because President Trump asked us to do so. We have done it because we believed it was the right thing to do, and we are not alone. There is broad-based international support for the action we have taken. NATO has issued a statement setting out its support, as have the Gulf Cooperation Council and a number of countries in the region. And over the weekend, I have spoken to a range of world leaders, including Chancellor Merkel, Prime Minister Gentiloni, Prime Minister Trudeau, Prime Minister Turnbull and European Council, Union Council President Donald Tusk. All have expressed their support for the actions that Britain, France and America have taken. Third, why did we not recall Parliament? Mr Speaker, the speed with which we acted was essential in cooperating with our partners to alleviate further humanitarian suffering and to maintain the vital security of our operations. This was a limited, targeted strike on a legal basis that has been used before, and it was a decision which required the evaluation of intelligence and information, much of which was of a nature that could not be shared with Parliament. We have always been clear that the Government has the right to act quickly in the national interest. I am absolutely clear, Mr Speaker, that it is Parliament's responsibility to hold me to account for such decisions, and Parliament will do so. But it is my responsibility as Prime Minister to make these decisions, and I will make them. 